Okay, wonderful, awesome. All right, everyone. So again, my name is Casey. Welcome to Earth Echoes Snack Size Science. I'm so excited to have you guys join us today. And just a reminder, this video will be recorded and will be available to watch again on Earth Echoes YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and get started with rockin' fossil finds. So today, here's what you'll need for our snack size science. You will need one cup of flour. You will also need one cup of used coffee grounds. You will need one half cup of salt. I just have kind of regular, I actually use pickling salt. So one, a half cup of salt, any kind of table salt will do. And you will need a quarter cup of sand or dirt. I live in Florida, so I'm fortunate enough. I have some sand handy. And you will need about three quarters cups of water. Now, I will tell you all that this recipe that we have listed here makes about four to five fossils, and we're going to get started making our fossils in just a few moments. So I'll also talk about this recipe and how you can adjust it to make a little bit less or a little bit more. So what exactly are fossils? Well, fossils offer a record of the past, specifically a record of all life that's been on Earth a long time ago. And fossilization is the process by which a plant or an animal actually becomes a fossil. I'm sure a lot of you have seen fossils in museums or even on TV or online. Now, this process of fossilization is extremely rare and only a small fraction of plants and animals that have ever lived over the past 600 million years have been preserved as fossils. It's pretty amazing. So let's talk about the process of fossilization. So first, an animal, of course, will pass away or die. And any soft tissue that is present in life decays, leaving behind hard parts like bones, teeth, and shells. Now, that usually happens really quickly as a result of bacteria taking action. Now, the second part of fossilization is that those hard parts, those bones, those shells, or those teeth might move. They might be transported by moving water, such as rivers. They might even be broken up. So when this happens, the fossil remains can be incomplete. So that's why it's much more common to find just a part of a fossil or a fragment. It's really rare and really exciting when someone finds a complete fossilized skeleton. It's pretty amazing. So the third step of fossilization is burial, and it's the most important. Now, this is when those hard materials like those bones, those shells, and those teeth become buried. And in most cases, that original material, um, like minerals, the hard parts were made of are slowly dissolved and replaced by new ones. So the minerals that make up those hard parts, they're replaced by new minerals that are found in the sediment where that those bones are buried. Now, when those original minerals in those bones are replaced by other minerals in the sediment, that's when we actually get a fossil. Now, sometimes that hard part is dissolved without ever being replaced by new material. And that's where we might see a cast or a mold or an impression of an original animal like you see here. So if a mold is filled in with sediment later on and then cemented into rock, it will make a cast of the original animal, which you can see right here. So these fossilization scenarios are a few of many possible processes that turn living organisms into rock-like material, like the fossils that we know today. And each process generally follows those three main steps, decay, transport, and burial. So paleontology is the study of fossils. And paleontology officially is the branch of science concerned with fossilized animals and plants. Now, when I was younger, I wanted to be a paleontologist. I grew up in North Dakota. There are a lot of fossils to be found there. And so it's super exciting for me today to talk a little bit about fossils. Okay, so who is ready to make your own fossils? Yes. All right, let's get started. So let's bring up that materials list again, our recipe, if you will. So again, you're going to need a cup of flour, a cup of used coffee grounds, a half a cup of salt, 
a quarter cup of sand or dirt, even soil, bag soil works, that's fine, and about three quarters cup of water. Now, I will tell you again that this recipe right here makes about four to five fossils. We call them either eggs or rocks, and you'll see why in just a second. Now, I when I was testing this out, um, I halved this recipe. I didn't want to make five fossils, so I only wanted to make two. So I cut the recipe in half, and I got two fossils out of it, and we'll talk about these a little bit later on. Now, if you want to make even more fossils than that, what can you do? Simply just double that recipe. Okay, so let's go ahead, and we're going to get all of our dry ingredients together, and let's come over to my little cooktop over here to my bowl. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all these dry ingredients into that bowl all at once. Doesn't matter what order at all. So again, you've got your cup of flour. So go ahead and dump that into your bowl. You've got your half a cup of salt right here. I pre-measured mine out today. One thing I did not pre-measure out is my coffee grounds. I wanted to talk about these a little bit. So we're going to need a cup of used coffee grounds. So this is really important. You need used coffee grounds for this experiment. You can see we've been collecting a lot of coffee here at my house. And what you want to do is you wanna let these coffee grounds dry out over some time. If your coffee grounds are still slightly wet, that's okay and I'll talk about that in just a second. So we need a cup of those used coffee grounds that are gonna go in with the rest of our dry ingredients. And it's okay if things are lumpy, that is totally fine. If you've ever seen a uh, fossil dig or paleontology, Earth is really lumpy and those rocks are lumpy. And then of course we need our quarter cup of sand, dirt, or soil. Like I said, I live here in Southwest Florida, so I'm fortunate enough to have some nice, beautiful sand. So I'm gonna add that in. Okay, so now next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our water to this mixture. Now, I did say you need three quarters cups of water. So what we're going to do is we are going to add our water bit by bit while we mix up or knead this mixture. And we're gonna to wanna to get it to a consistency where we're seeing things start to stick together. So let's go ahead and try this out. All right, so I did mention also that those coffee grounds, if you do have wet coffee grounds, you are gonna use less water with this little demonstration. So you can see here that we're starting to mix things. It's almost starting to look a little bit like a cake batter. Um, I definitely need some more water in here. And we want this consistency. You can see it's really starting to stick to my hands. And that's good. That's exactly what we want. It's gonna get a little bit messy. And you want a consistency that we will eventually get to, here we go, that you're really gonna see, see things sticking together. Because what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna take this mixture and we're gonna form fossils or egg shapes out of it. Well, I'm gonna really get in here. All right, this is looking really, really good. All those ingredients are mixing together. And I will also say, you might have noticed as you were starting to add that water in, it, this stuff makes a really cool um, play sand as well. So if you need to bring the outdoors inside, you can have some really great play sand with this mixture as well. So before you make it into fossils, you can use it, make a little racetrack, make a sand castle inside. Our pro tip here at Earth Echo is to always use a puppy pad if you're doing science that helps with the messiness, helps with the cleanup. All right, I think I've got a pretty good consistency here. So it's almost like a dough, you can see. So what you're gonna do with your fossil is you're gonna take a portion, I don't wanna make such a big one, and you're gonna kind of flatten it out just in your hand here. Kind of looks like mud. Now in my mixture, I might've went a little bit overboard with some of that water. And I'm gonna place a little treasure inside. So you can put anything inside your fossil. You can put a little toy if you have one. I happen to have a seashell here that works pretty well. And you can put anything inside this fossil because what we're gonna do later on is we're gonna excavate our fossils after they've dried out. So once you have your little treasure inside, you're gonna take another patty of that fossil and you're just gonna cover it up and you're gonna start to form a nice little egg or stone. Now you can really make this any shape that you want. Uh, doesn't have to be precise. They turn out kind of funny. This one seems like it's gonna flatten out because I think I have a little bit too much water there. 
So I'm just going to move my ingredients aside because I want to set this fossil down. We know that the treasure is inside. So, okay, so that's how you start to make your fossils. Now, how do you get them to dry out? Well, what you really need to do, you need to dry these out in order to excavate them later. So what I did last week is I tried doing my fossils and I made two different sizes. My hands are gonna be a little bit messy, so I apologize about that. So I have two different sizes here. And I will tell you, there's two methods to dry these out. You can just simply air dry them or you can try and dry them out in your oven as well. Now, if you dry them out of your oven, just simply place these on a baking sheet and just put it in your oven on the lowest setting, which is typically around 150 degrees to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the original recipe that I went off of said it only takes about 20 minutes to dry out, but I will tell you, this little guy took an awful long time to dry out. I would say about 40 minutes total. Um, and the way you're gonna figure out if your fossils are drying, is they're gonna change color. So let's compare the color of my dried fossils to that mixture that we have and that new fossil that I just made. So you can definitely see they are, that mixture is very, very dark in color and my dried out fossils are very, very light. So that's a great way to see whether or not your fossils have dried out. And this big guy, I tried to dry him out just by air drying. And I will tell you, I had him air drying for about four days. Last night I checked on him again and he looked still, the coloration just wasn't quite there yet. And so I actually put him in the oven just to make sure that he was dry for today. So again, you're gonna make your fossils, put some treasures inside, put whatever you want. And it's kind of fun, especially if you make fossils for somebody else, you can hide fun stuff in there so that when you give them away, maybe as gifts or something fun to do at a party or everybody's social distancing, you could even leave these outside someone's house as a gift and something to do. And when they excavate them, something will be inside for them. So that's super fun. So do you all wanna see what was inside my fossils? So we check this out, should we excavate this? So the act of uh, digging up fossils is excavation. So let me go ahead and get a different surface here that I can excavate on. And let me get this all set up for you because I wanna show you the treasures I put inside my fossils. Now, before we excavate, um, we're gonna need a couple of other things. First of all, let's get an adult. We need an adult in the room because we will be handling some excavation tools. So you need the supervision of an adult. You need some safety equipment. Safety goggles on, you definitely need those. You'll need some tools. So I have some excavation tools. I have a hammer and this is exactly why those adults come in handy. I even have a screwdriver and I have a chisel. So we're gonna see what works best. So you guys ready? Let's excavate some fossils. And I will tell you, I forgot my gloves. I should have my gloves on for protection as well. But since I am my own adult, my own supervisor, I think I'm okay to proceed. So let's go ahead and see what's inside of my fossils. And Casey, right. before you get started, I just wanted to let you know that Vivi Rose, Piper, and Kylie all say hi. All right, hey everyone. It's so wonderful to have all you out there. Vivi Rose, Piper, and Kylie. Wonderful to see you guys today. Oh, you guys, this is so fun. So I will, full disclosure, I have never done this before. It's probably pretty loud out there, so I apologize. Ooh, so this is really fun. If any of you saw my egg experiment, I get really excited when I do some new things. All right, so we're breaking into our fossil. Do we see anything yet? Let's see. Ooh, interesting. Ooh, I see something there. I'm gonna try and break into my little guy too. And Casey, while you're excavating, Patricia wanted to know, did you, um, when you air dried your fossils, did you put them outside in the sun or did you have them in your house? Oh, that is such a good question, Patricia. Um, so um, I know Patricia lives in Florida as well. I'm in South Florida. So our air is really, really humid. And so um, we've been, I actually dried mine out inside. Um, and I will say a combination this week, we've had our, our air conditioning on, but we've also um, had our windows open quite a bit because we've had really gorgeous weather here in Florida. Oh, and I'm finding something. I'm gonna save that to the side. And so Patricia, I would encourage everybody out there to maybe 
try your own, see what method works best. Um, just be really patient with it. I thought two days was going to be enough to dry out my fossils and it wasn't. It spent, it was four days and I still put them in the oven last night. So I did air dry them in my home. Here in Florida, I think the reason why it took so long was because of our humid air and we've had our windows open. But I would encourage if any of you are up north, you probably have some wonderful cool breezes. You can probably dry them outside, maybe just maybe cover them up so that somebody doesn't walk away with them, an animal or something doesn't skate away with them. So there you go. All right, guys, I got to my treasure. So let's see what I have in my fossils. Okay. Does anybody know what treasures I have? And I will grab these and I'll hold them close to the camera. So keep using that chat space on YouTube. Does anybody have any idea what I have found in my fossils? And you guys can even see this coloration right here on this bigger fossil that I made. You can see this area is dry and this area still looks a little wet. And so I probably could have dried this big one out a little bit longer. All right, anybody? have any idea what's inside my fossils. I've got- Casey, while, while we're looking and trying to figure out what you found, I wanted to let you know that Piper's planning on wrapping candy and using it in one of her fossils as a treasure. Oh, Piper, I love that idea. That's adorable. What a great way. And see, I love it. You could, you could leave it on somebody's doorstep or in their mailbox. That's so fun. So does anybody know what these are? Looks like we have a guess of shark's teeth. Ooh, shark's teeth, you're exactly right. Yay, good job. Those are shark's teeth. Okay, now that I'm done excavating, whew, the safety goggles are hot, are very hot. All right, so those are definitely shark teeth. So that was the treasure I wanted to put inside my homemade fossils for you all to find today. So why are fossils so if we think about any if anybody has seen a fossil like a, a dinosaur skeleton in a museum if anybody's seen a shark tooth that looks like this why are fossils dark in color what happens to fossils so we talked about that process of fossilization and so we can apply that same process to shark's teeth so sharks are cartilaginous fish that live in our oceans and they've been in our oceans for about 400 million years now since they're cartilaginous fish that means that their skeletons are not made up of hard bone like ours or even dinosaurs or even bony fish but rather their skeletons are made up of cartilage, which is the same stuff that makes up our ears. We can bend our ears and we can wiggle the tips of our noses. It's really weird, flexible stuff. So when that shark dies, that cartilaginous skeleton, it will dissolve in the ocean. It won't go through that process of fossilization, but shark teeth do. And that's because shark teeth are made of dentin and enamel, the same thing that make up our teeth. And it is a hard substance that have minerals inside of it. Now that shark, when it dies in the ocean, we still have its teeth. Their skeleton will dissolve because it's made up of cartilage. And the teeth will actually absorb the minerals in the sediment that it's buried in that sand and that silt. Remember, burial is a really important process of fossilization. So these teeth, those minerals will be replaced by other minerals in that sediment. And so that's why when we find shark teeth, they're not white typically, but if we find shark teeth in the sand that have washed up on the shore, or if we're digging in the ocean, they are dark in color. And that's because they've taken on that gray, black, or brown color of the sediment. So voila, you have shark teeth fossils. So sharks have been living in our ocean for about 400 million years. And one of the coolest shark teeth that you can find that's been fossilized is from the Megalodon shark. Now here you can see a picture of lots of really cool shark teeth 
fossils. Shark's teeth come in all different shapes and sizes depending on the shark. And really by looking at their teeth, we can tell what they like to eat as well. But that Megalodon shark tooth, that's that big one right in the middle. It's about the size of my hand. That is one of the coolest finds you can ever find if you're searching for fossilized shark teeth. Now, Megalodon lived in our ocean about 5 million years ago, and it makes the average great white shark that lives in our oceans today seem really small. So here's a cool diagram. We've got a human there. Compare that to the size of a great white shark, which would be around 20 feet in length. And then compare that to that big outline in the back that's Megalodon. And we estimate that Megalodon may have grown to be about 60 feet in length. So we can find lots of different fossils in the world. And one of the coolest fossils I think to find are shark's teeth. I love sharks. They're one of my favorite animals in the ocean. All right, everyone, before we start to wrap things up, do we have any questions coming in from YouTube? We have a question from Piper and she wants to know what kind of fossils have you found? Ooh, great question, Piper. So Piper, I have found a lot of shark teeth. I said I live in Southwest Florida. Um, and if, especially in South Florida, you can find a lot of different shark teeth. There's some really great places that people know of, that divers know of, of where to go to find shark teeth, um, of where beachcombers know to go up to find shark teeth. So this is, I still get excited when I find shark teeth on the beach. It's really cool. It's really fun. Um, I'm trying to think. I actually, there's a great place that I have visited outside of Denver, Colorado as well called Dinosaur Ridge. And you can see the fossils that are preserved in the ridge. We hiked it and it's really, really cool. They have got neat signage to tell you what you're looking at. But what um, paleontologists did was they started to excavate that area, but then they stopped and they found that by leaving it natural and kind of exposed, it's a better teaching tool to teach people out there. Another really great place to visit is Mammoth Hot Springs outside of Rapid City, South Dakota. Um, that is an awesome place because at Mammoth, they are actually excavating mammoths, woolly mammoths right now. And you can walk around the excavation site and you can even uh, visit it online. They have a great website for you to see as well. Another really great resource if anybody's into paleontology is the Museum of the Rockies. I'm going to give a shout out to Montana State University, my alma mater. Uh, the Museum of the Rockies is a fantastic place to learn about fossils and paleontology. Great question, Piper. Any other questions? Yeah, Jenna is wondering if the humidity in Florida would affect normal fossil formation or has it in the past? Oh, that's a great question, Jenna. And I would say probably not because that fossilization process happens underground. Remember these, um, the, well, I'll use my shark jaw. That's the only thing I have close to a bone to demonstrate. But say the shark jaw um, were to, be buried somewhere. So part of fossilization is burial. That is the most important stage. So we're talking that this shark jaw, pretend this is a, a bone of an animal, it would float somewhere, it'd be transported somewhere, and then eventually it would settle. And say it settles in a river. Say it's in a riverbed, that river is going to go flowing over it. And what's on the bottom of the river? We've got a lot of sediments, we have sand, we have silt, and it will eventually cover the shark jaw. And fossilization doesn't happen overnight. It takes about 10,000 years. It takes a really long time. And so I would say humidity is probably not quite a factor, but I would say what sediments are over that bone, what sediments are over that animal that has passed, that it's buried in, that definitely could affect the fossilization process. Great question, Jenna. And Patricia was wondering, do you know if fingernails and toenails fossilize? Wow, that's a really good question. Fingernails and toenails. I don't know if they fossilize. So our fingernails and our toenails are made up of keratin. Now, if you look at humans' fingernails and toenails, they're really not that thick. So I don't quite know if these would fossilize or not. I think that's a great question for Google. Hmm. I know that fingernails and toenails can be preserved. If you've ever heard of the peat bogs, um, there are peat bogs. Jacqueline, you might have to double check my fact here. I want to say they're in Ireland. 
but I may be very wrong. Um, but there are peat bogs that humans have actually been buried in and certain things like their hair has been preserved. It's pretty amazing. Great question. Very great yeah. question. It looks like just to for some clarification that it could happen and in, in, in you know some animals like elephants, bigger animals have bigger nails. That's what I thought of. I thought but of it's elephants. not, but it's not, it'd have to be really, really perfect conditions. So right? it's not common. Oh, and you know what though, Patricia and Piper, now that I'm thinking about this, uh raptor, velociraptor toenails have definitely been fossilized. But think of their toenails compared to ours. Velociraptor toenails were like huge, huge talons. And so there's a lot of material there that would fossilize. Whereas ours, I think if we like clipped our fingernail and hoped for it to fossilize, I, I'm not quite sure what kind of result we would get. Probably not as something as dramatic as a velociraptor toenail. That's a great question. Any others? Definitely. We have one more question. And Jenna wonders if some animals don't fossilize because of how their bones are structured? Would some animals not fossilize because of how their bones are structured? If Jenna has an example, type that in. What are you thinking of? So the one that comes to my mind are cartilaginous fish, like sharks, skates, rays, and some of their other relatives like chimeras. So that cartilage is a different substance. It's not a hard material like bone. It doesn't have the same mineral makeup as bones. And so that cartilage, it dissolves rather than fossilize. Um, so that is definitely an example of how a skeletal structure will or will not fossilize. Um, and like I mentioned before, it's super, super rare to find a full fossilized skeleton all in one spot. Usually you find just bits and pieces, you find fragments because that animal's body has been transported. It's been moved somehow, it's been broken apart um, over the years. And so it's really rare and it's a really cool find when you find a full fossilized skeleton. Awesome. Yeah, I think that definitely answered the question. Uh, we don't have any more questions, but Vivi Rose wants you uh, and everyone to know that she has a huge black megalodon tooth. Oh, you do, Vivi Rose. I should have known better. I should have invited you on as my guest so that you could show it. That's awesome. You know what, Vivi Rose, and this goes for anybody out there tuning in today. If you have a fossil at your house, if you've got a preserved ammonite, if you have a megalodon tooth, if you have shark teeth just like me, I want you guys to post that, share that on social media and tag Earth Echo. We would love to see all of your fossils. And hey, if you guys try to make your own fossils and excavate, we would love to see those images as well. I hope you guys have had so much fun. Well, you guys have all had fantastic questions today. So if you want, you can take this a little bit further. You can explore careers like paleontology with Earth Echo STEM Explorer and on our website, you can find our cabinet of curiosities. We want you to go there and open our cabinet, discover careers like paleontology, geology, astronomy. We have wonderful careers that are featured on here with our short and dynamic videos. So check those out. Now you can of course check out all of Earth Echo's other resources on that website. And I wanna let you all know that we are doing a really exciting giveaway. So today I want you to first of all, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're going to thank us later. Then I want you to go to Earth Echo International's Facebook page to check out the details of our giveaway. So again, like all of Earth Echo's social media, subscribe to our social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here before you go. Now, if you are on our website and you do like our programs and you wanna give us a little bit of support these days, feel free to make a donation right there at earthecho.org. Now, of course, you can join us for more Snack Size Science the rest of this month. We're so excited to bring you a whole nother month full of this program. We've been having so much fun with it. So today's episode has been recorded. You can come back, make more fossils, watch it again right here on Earth Echo's YouTube channel. Feel free to share these resources out with any other teachers or families that you think might be interested. So thank you all so much for stopping in for some Snack Size Science. I hope you've had a little fun and learned something along the way. From all of us here at Earth Echo International, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep exploring. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>